Thanks very much to our um, last three speakers. We're at the PRI, we're really, really looking forward to being part of this initiative. We think that it's an extremely important initiative uh, for us. It, it does take forward the work that we had done with investors around the Montreal Carbon Pledge, and it's good to see that there's some further action that, that comes from initiatives like this. So for our signatories, we'll come out with further information. Um, Paul Chandler, who runs our environmental work at the PRI is going to be the person who's responsible for this engagement in, in our in our organisation. So Paul will be out soon with lots more details to, to you. So anyway, now it's my um, now it's my job for, to close off the conference. So I just wanted to just say a few words about what's happened over you know the the course of the last couple of days, but also, of course, I want to thank a whole lot of people who made the conference possible. So for us, we started the week off um, talking about, really about the blueprint, and we talked to you about all of the initiatives that were in our blueprint and our nine priority areas for the uh, next decade. And I think many of you will have seen the blueprint shown to you throughout the many sessions that we've had over the last few days, whether that's been on the SDGs, on climate change, on ESG integration, um, and empowering asset owners and a whole lot more. We've also, I think, over the last couple of days gone into a great deal of detail on a huge range of ESG issues. In actual fact, it's overwhelming how many issues there are that we're all actually trying to deal with. And I, for me, I really thought that the discussion on ESG integration went to another level. There was, a lot, there was a lot more depth in what we were talking about with ESG integration and a lot more that we could see where investors were really making sure that they were moving their responsible investment into their investment teams and talking about not having it separated. And I think that's all sort of heading in a really good direction. And of course, we also talked to signatories about accountability and the new accountability mechanisms that we're putting in place. And I just want to remind people that, that, uh, that, that, that you can put your submissions in for that until the 30th of September. You've heard some about it here at the conference. If you've got views, please make sure that those views are heard so we know what you, what you think. And we've already had an incredible number of submissions and people have already, since they've been at the conference, started putting more in, which is fantastic. I think uh, over the last couple of days, we've also tried to put S issues more onto the agenda. We all recognise that often in the ESG space that the S space really gets left out. So we've tried to focus on issues to do with labour practices and human rights. And we heard directly which from a worker of, from Tesla. And I think it was great to be able to hear from someone directly. It makes these issues come alive. And as Priya touched on, we've also talked about climate change, but we need to think about climate change not just from an E issue. We need to think about climate change from an S issue. We need to make sure that there is a just transition as we change the energy sources and as we make a huge shift in economies. Because we've done a lot of talking about stranded assets and we talk about stranded assets being physical assets, but stranded assets are human as well. Work, there's workers who are getting left behind and there's communities that are very much get left behind as well. And we need to think about these things in a more holistic way, particularly when we're asking companies about their scenario analysis. We also talked about the SDGs and for us, we see the SDGs as a way of lifting up the S issues as well and a framework for you to think about your ESG approach. And we released our paper on the investment case for the SDGs. And for all of you who are still wondering about the SDGs and how you fit them in, I would really encourage you to read this paper. We're going to do some further work on the SDGs as well. We're going to focus on active ownership and focus on asset allocation. So again, I encourage you to, to read that paper. We've got our academic conference happening here at the same time, uh, trying to bring academics to the uh, to the issue of responsible investment. We know we, we need all the good data and empirical evidence that we can get. 
So we'll be re releasing shortly, as I talked about the other day, some new research that shows the benefits of engagement, particularly collaborative engage engagement, which is very apt at this time where we're trying to do a huge global engagement and we know that to be successful we need a huge a huge weight of capital to make companies change so uh, that that research I think is going to be really really useful so I I mean as I was going to all the different sessions I I I was uh, amazed about the amount of work that people were doing. So I felt really inspired for the future that with all of the work that people in investment firms are doing, that, we're, that responsible investment is going to make a difference and we are starting to make that difference. And we're starting to see more people from the mainstream, for want of a better word, come along to the conference and not see all of these issues as fringe issues. They see them as central to their investment case. And we need to keep making that case and we need to keep seeing that happen. So thank, I want to thank everyone for their attendance. I, I mean, as I said in the early, we could have earlier, we um, had a huge number of people who wanted to come to the conference this year. We couldn't take everyone and I'm really, really sorry about that. But I think again, that shows the enthusiasm and the interest in the responsible investment space within the investment community. Because uh, you know we weren't getting these numbers a few years ago. So obviously to make a conference happen, it takes a lot of people. So I first of all want to um, thank our sponsors and our exhibitors. We definitely couldn't put on the conference without those sponsors. I particularly want to thank Deutsch Asset Management, who were our um, diamond sponsor. I'd also um, like to thank the PRI board and Martin. Martin, Martin had to leave, but uh, for all of their input as well into the conference agenda and to getting it up and running, they're, they're, they're always great support. I, I want to thank all of the PRI staff so for us to put on this event takes about every staff member in our organisation is somehow involved. And it takes an incredible amount of work to get it all together. So I want to thank all of the PRI staff, but I particularly want to thank our events team. So I want to thank Laura and Claire and Megan, who are the people who've been running around over the last couple of days making all of this come together. And I'd also particularly like to thank our communications team as well and our partnership team who also do a lot of work to make this happen. So thanks to Joy and Alessandro and Ben and Ruth and Adam and James. And I'd also like to thank Monica for all her hard work over the last couple of days as well and keeping us all on track. Thanks to all of our speakers as well. I mean, you know, we obviously the conference is nothing without the knowledgeable people who come along and give up their time and are willing to share their knowledge and expertise with other people. So thanks to all of the speakers. So on to thinking about next year. So next year, our conference is going to be held in San Francisco, another wonderful city. We're something a bit different next year though. So the conference is on the 12th to the 14th of September. When we booked this a long time ago, the climate summit that um, was talked about yesterday by Christiana Figueres wasn't on. But the climate summit is now on in San Francisco on the 12th to 14th of September. <laughs> We're seeing this as a huge opportunity to bring more and more investors to be involved in the climate summit. So we're working very closely with Governor Brown's office. Uh, the, the Governor of California is responsible for, for this event with um, Michael Bloomberg and with Christiana Figueres. So we're working with them to integrate in the two events so that people can, can come to our event but can also go and hear some of the uh, particular speakers that they'll have on climate as well. But this means, so you all need to pay attention to this, this means that San Francisco is going to be incredibly, incredibly busy. You need to think about your flights. You need to think about your accommodation. We, we have 1,000 spots for the conference. So we're going to um, open registrations earlier this year. We'll, we'll do that in November. We've also um, 
got a link up at the moment if you go to the website where you can put in expressions of interest. So if you want to get in early to say, yes, I'm coming, before we actually open, for physically open um, our registrations, I'd encourage you to do that. But it was, I think you just, you know, it's not one of those things that you're going to be able to think about a week before <laughs> and, get into, and get into the event and find, an air, find a flight and find, find any accommodation. Of course, San Francisco is a huge, huge city. It's got lots of re resources. It's got lots of hotels. And um, anyway, I think it's going to be fantastic and it'll be great to have so many investors able to participate, as I said, in some of the climate discussions. So that's it for me. Thank you to all of our signatories, all the people who came, uh, came along. I really um, thank you for your enthusiasm over the last couple of days, but in particular, thank you for your ongoing support of the PRI and all the input that you give to us as well. So safe travels. I uh, hope that you all get home very safely, wherever that may be. I know some people have short distances and we have a lot of people here from, from Australia, I've noticed, which is fantastic, who have got very long distances uh, to get home. But anyway, safe travels and there's lunch outside. <laughs>